Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the middle of the month love readings. This is going to be for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Before we get into your reading, Aries, I did want to give you guys a little bit more insight. So we're going to go ahead and do some uh, shell readings and then we'll get into your cards for the month of December 2019 in regards to love and romance. So let's see what spirit has for you guys for the month of December. 2019 in regards to love and romance aries sun moon rising and venus okay all righty okay aries um right at the center i do want to mention there is going to be um there's going to be an opportunity coming to you. For some of you guys, it could have felt almost as if it's something that you've been waiting for for quite a while or you've been experiencing like a waiting period. Uh, and what they're saying is that that is finally going to open up for you guys. And I want to say the last week of December or January, first week of January, you guys are going to be receiving some very, very positive news. Now, this could be connected in regards to love and romance. As an example, if you've been waiting for someone to communicate with you or to reach out to you, uh, they will be doing so. Now, for others of you, they are telling me that this could be in regards to your money, in regards to your finances. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt. Now, in the past and passing, again, I did see a lot of like blockages. I feel that Aries has been really tested this year, 2019. And there was a lot of like experiencing of a lot of resistance, um, perhaps feeling like, you know, endeavors or new projects weren't really taking off uh, because it almost seemed like they kind of there was always some type of blockage that you had to overcome in order to be able to, uh, you know, move that along or see some type of progress. Now, this could be in regards to relationships as well. Obviously, it is a love reading. Um, and what they're saying is that where you felt that there was no opportunity, perhaps some of you guys were dealing with a person, it could have been a friend, it could be a person that has been very difficult um, for you guys to uh, for you guys to take it to the next level and actually date this person. I feel that they're very, very like unavailable. But again, I do see in the very near future and the present going into the new future, I do see the opportunity opening up. So I feel that circumstances in that person's life are going to set on the course or the path where you guys are going to be able to connect on a deeper level. Now, I do want to mention um, right here, you guys can see this is in a upright position and in, a, in, a, in the which would we consider negative and positive. Um, so what they're telling me here is if you're dealing with a person that uh, perhaps you desire or you are ruled by lust uh, towards this connection, what they're saying is that um, the only way this, this can actually take flight or this can go in a positive direction is if you actually ask yourself if you are uh, trying to pursue this connection or this person purely on the sexual and physical and if you're wanting something long term and that's not exactly what you're looking for, you need to be more vocal about that. Because I feel that the reason why they're so closed off for some of you guys, it could be because either they know that you're a serial dater or they're aware that perhaps you don't take things very seriously. Um, so it's almost like a question up here of should I, should I not? But I do see the opportunity opening up for you guys. So this is directly for those of you that are interested in someone, but they're very difficult to attain, or perhaps uh, they're very guarded and it's difficult for you to understand if they are interested or not. Now, for those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, again, I feel that opportunities will start to open up and um, you'll be able to experience a more, uh, I guess, less resistance type of energy for the coming weeks going into January. Um, where perhaps you could have felt that that was actually keeping um, uh, keeping your focus from the relationship itself. So what they're telling me is work-wise, uh, you could have been experiencing a lot of stress, a lot of um, 
worries in regards to your professional life and that could have directly been affecting the relationship now for others of you i do see that if you are dealing with a person or like a, a the mother to your children or the father to your children uh, but you guys are no longer in a relationship there has to be some type of breakage or some type of um the, there needs to be some type of distance i feel that both of you are very involved in each other's lives and I think that that's really affecting your personal life in regards to your love and romance. So keep that in mind, Aries, okay? All right, let's get into your reading and let's see what the cards have to say. All right, so the cards have already been shuffled and have already been cut for time purposes so let's get right into your reading Aries now your first card here is the nine of wands feeling tired feeling like things have not been very easy for you Aries and I can totally relate because I have been I have a lot of clients that are Aries and it just seems like when it comes to relationships it's it's a hit and miss kind of thing um, and I do see a lot of you guys again very guarded now, the obstacle here is the Six of Swords. So this is exactly what we were talking about when they mentioned ex-partners or people that um, perhaps you have children with. Uh, so the obstacle here is that you're refusing to move on or that you're refusing to create some type of distance from past relationships. Now, I understand, obviously, if you have children, uh, that's a link that is always going to remain. That is a link and a connection that is always going to be present. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's okay for them to uh, pretty much know the ins and outs of your romance as well as you. And I think that for some of you guys, you guys have gotten very comfortable. But energetically speaking, it's affecting both the person that you're dealing with and yourself as well. So, uh, And this is a general reading, so this could be the other person as well. Keep that in mind. Now, in the past and passing, you do have here the King of Pentacles. Uh, so for some of you guys, you could have been dealing with an earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. It doesn't have to be a male. Obviously, it could be a female. It's a general reading. But in the past and passing, I do see them looking towards you, almost like interested, but not interested. Uh, it's almost a feeling like hot and cold type of energy. For some of you guys, you could be like randomly con communicating with them. But then all of a sudden, there's like a stop of communication. Um, and I think, again, it has a lot to do with what's going on in your life as well as what's going on in their life as I do see them actively looking towards the Six of Swords, uh, moving on or going towards trying to achieve um, new goals and aspirations. So that could be what's taking up a lot of their energy. But as well, it could represent that they don't see you as very consistent Aries. Now, your next card here is the full card. So the full card does promise new beginnings. Let's see what else comes out. All right, so you have the 10 of wands, and this is your crowning energy. So a lot of stress, a lot of feeling burdened, feeling like um, the good thing about the 10 of wands, it, when it comes out, it indicates uh, getting to the point of ending struggles or difficulties. So if you've been experiencing that specifically when it comes to business or finances, understand that there is like you're getting to, to right to the pivotal moment where things start to pick up in a very positive way area so try the best you can not to worry so much about that now you do have here your card Aries uh, this is the Emperor card and this is uh, what you don't see coming so again if you guys can see let me pick this up it's almost like they're looking at each other. For some of you, Aries, if you're dealing with a female that is in Earth energy, they could actually be taking on the male masculine energy of an Earth sign. Um, and with your card, obviously, it's like it's two very strong-headed minded people that perhaps there is respect and admiration for one and the other. I feel though, I do see children in the picture, so I feel that children is something that is very either important or is currently affecting the relationship. And it could be you, Aries, that is uh, very focused or putting a lot of effort in, you know, the growth of your children, uh, perhaps 
getting to a point where they're hitting their teenage years or perhaps their dating years, that type of energy. And it's taking up a lot of your time. But I feel that for some of you guys, this connection could have been a connection that has been going on for a while and it just hasn't took flight. Now, for those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, I do see you and your partner um, being very, sorry, you guys, being very um, on the same page, being able to uh, encourage each other and pretty much start off the year very positive in the sense of working together to attain a goal or achieve something uh, that you're both trying to attain. For some of you guys, it could be even stepping it up and going to the next level when it comes to relationships. Now, the advice card here is the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles, um, it's all about giving and taking. Um, if you're the one that tries or tends to give the most, it's time for you to give some opportunities for your partner to pick up uh, or to start giving or to start doing. Um, if it's usually you, the one that, you know, reaches out or communicates, etc., cetera, um, perhaps it's time that you kind of go, you know, off the grid and allow them to be the one to try to reach out to you. I feel that this is very important. And for some of you guys, it could be the frustration of feeling like they're not putting effort. Now, your next card here is the King of Swords. And the King of Swords is the, the general energy of the person of your interest of the person that you're dealing with. For some of you guys, it could be an air sign, a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. For others, it could just represent um, that the person is very focused, you know, with the King of Pentacles and the King of Swords. I see them almost like, uh, for some of you guys, it could be like feeling that you know that they're very genuine people and that they care, uh, but it's almost a feeling like they're very cold and standoffish lately. But again, I see them very focused. For some, it could be that they're very focused because they're trying to achieve or they're trying to attain some type of goal or something that has to do with uh, money. So it could be like business-wise, it could be uh, just really, you know, focused in trying to attain some type of stability. Now, I do want to mention with the King of Swords, if I want to say the last week of December or the first week of January, if there is an opportunity to have a conversation, which I, I do see that happening, I think that it's very important for you to be vocal, Aries, and what it is that you want. Like, not just in a playful manner, uh, which you guys are very known for, but actually speaking like on a more serious tone in order for them to be, I guess, more aware of what your intentions are. And the reason for that is it could be because they just don't take you seriously. And it could be because of your personality, um, which I know a lot of Aries have very playful personalities. Now, your next card here is the Knight of Pentacles. So the Knight of Pentacles, again, I do see a lot of Earth energy here. Um, and again, like I said, it's almost, it's like a distance. For some of you guys, it could be that you're interested or you're kind of dating someone from a distance. They're not local or uh, it could be a cross-country type of thing, a connection uh, with the person that is not physically here or not physically here with you all the time. Um, but I do see that this connection does have promise for something long-term as the Knight of Pentacles usually signifies something that won't come easy, but it will. it is something that is long-lasting. And finally, your last card here is the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups speaks about moving forward and being able to release anything that's been holding you back. The Eight of Cups can also promise uh, new opportunities where uh, I guess I can say what the word is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Opportunities that open up where for some of you guys, it could be actually thinking about either moving or changing residency with the Knight of Pentacles. It could be an opportunity for um, going into a different company or something like that, where it's going to take for you guys to actually like, I do see you guys struggling with making a decision. It could be an opportunity that pays you more money, but you do have, it comes at it at the expense of having to move. Um, but I think that this is something that is going to be playing out for you guys uh, in January is what they're saying. Um, but the Eight of Cups, a lot of people see it as like a sad type of card. 
But I think that the Eight of Cups has the positive of the Eight of Cups is that it does promise new beginnings. You're being able to pull away from anything that's been holding you back or pull away from even relationships from the past and being able to walk your own path and make a new road, make a new path, make a new way. Um, and it usually comes at, again, like I said, the expense of something, you know, something that we're giving up in order to receive something better. So it could be, again, like I said, for those of you guys uh, that are currently trying to grow within your company, it could be that you get offered an opportunity, but it comes at the expense of having to move. Um, for others of you, it doesn't necessarily have to mean like move like from a far distance. For some, it could just be like an extra commute, that type of energy. But all in all, I do see very positive cards for you guys here. Like I said, Aries, um, what they are saying is that you need to let go of things from the past. And that includes relationships. Even if there is children involved, uh, you guys need to, I guess, create that distance emotionally so that you can be able to start something new. Um, and it doesn't, and the, you know, the past doesn't affect the present. Now, for others of you guys, especially those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, I do see travel for some of you. So it could be like traveling. Um, it could be because of the holidays. Uh, but for others, I do see an opportunity in regards to money that is going to affect not in a negative way the relationship, but where you both have to come together and actually get on the same page. Now, your final message here is um, your commitment is being tested first quarter moon. So again, uh, going back to that of the opportunity that's coming towards you, I do feel that it's going to it's going to be a major transition for some of you guys. So again, it could have a lot to do with communication. Communication is going to be very key for you, especially those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship. I think that um, it may be tested in the sense of do we want the same things, but I think that it's necessary to have that conversation because only then knowing exactly where you guys see the relationship going can you actually, you know, fortify and strengthen that relationship, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed these readings, and we will see you guys uh, in January. I want to wish all of you guys a Merry Yule, Happy and Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. And uh, like I said, you guys definitely stay tuned for the January readings, as they're going to be very exciting for 2020. So we'll see each other then. Bye.